Okay, so the R exam um, here, uh, the first one is about the electric field generated by point charge. And the point charge actually um, is um, located at the center of the triangles. And there are three charges and the triangle and have the equal side. So um, they are symmetrical. The first question, what's the electric field and at the location of point three? So we are going to check the uh, electric field at this point. So at the point three, we only need to calculate the electric field generated by Q1 and the Q2. Okay. So the charge cannot uh, generate an electric field to in affect itself. So there are two electric fields. From the charge one, this is a positive charge, this is a negative charge. So the Q1 generates the electric field in this way. E1, let me label it as E1, and the E2 generated by the second electric field, uh, second charge point. Uh, write down. Okay, and uh, we are going to calculate the total electric field. So we sum them. The total electric field should go in this way, right? And you will find that because the E1 and E2 had the same magnitude but different direction, so the total electric field um, doesn't have a Y component. There's only an X component. The Y component cancels out, but the electric uh, but the x component uh, doubles. So to calculate the e total, that will be um, e1 plus e2. And the e1 is k q1 charge over a square. This is the magnitude, and the direction of the e1 here is the, the angle. The angle is 60 degree, 60 degree. So we will have a column vector cosine 60 degree, sine 60 degree. This is E1 and E2, the same magnitude, but the direction goes down. So we have the cosine 60 degree, the same x component, but the opposite y component. Okay, so at the end, the y component cancel out and you only have the x component. So that will be 674 Newton per coulomb, zero. Okay, this is uh, the solution for the electric field. And the electric force on the chart Q3 we use this formula, force equal to the charge three times the electric field. And the electric field here, we just calculate, but the charge is negative. So we have used negative three times 10 to the seven, negative seven coulomb times 674 Newton per coulomb. Okay, we time them, then eventually, we'll get minus zero two times negative three Newton. This is uh, how we do the breathing. If you have a correct uh, electric field, you have this one, you got one credit. And each question is valued as one point. And so we have total uh, point 24. On the course side, the total is 18. That means if you get 18 or more, you will get an A. And so each question is one point. And for the second one, because we are going to use the electric field um, from the first question. If in the first question, the E you get is wrong, this is wrong, but you still have this relation and you use a wrong electric field to get a wrong electric force, um, we don't take credit off. So if you have the correct uh, equation and you use this equation,
but the wrong electric field to get a wrong electric force, um, we will uh, treat this uh, a correct answer and we only take credit from the wrong electric field. This is how we do the grading. We don't take uh, too many credits off if you have uh, a result from the previous question. Okay. Then number three, uh, point P1 is exactly in the middle between the three charges. What's the work required to take charge three, Q3, and move it downward until it reaches to point one? Okay, to, to, uh, yeah, to point P1. Let me remove this one. Hmm. And you will find that uh, the initial position for Q3 is here, and the electric field is in this way, okay? This is the electric field. And the electric force goes to the opposite. This is the force. And we move the Q3 down to the point P. And you will find that if we're going to calculate the work, this is equal to the force dot product distance, right? And the force, in this case, is perpendicular to the distance. So you see, they are perpendicular. So the work is there. So this is the first method, method one. The second method, we are going to calculate the potential difference from the initial position to point P, right? The potential is sum of the potential generated by each point charge. So we have KQ over the A, right? And from the point charge one, we have Q1 over A plus KQ2 over A. And from the initial position to the point P, the distance from point charge one to point charge two are equivalent. So the distance are equivalent, but the charge has opposite sign. The potential is zero. Q1 equal to minus Q2, but the distance is the same. So the potential is zero. If the potential is zero, at the initial position and the point P, then the potential difference is zero minus zero, that's zero, right? So the work done by the electric force is charge three times the potential difference, that's zero. Okay, so no matter what um, method you use, you should have a zero result, okay? This is a number three. Number four, uh, starting from the initial configuration in the figure, does one need to supply energy to move Q2 infinitely far away from the two other charges? So, um, start from the Q2. Mm -hmm. Move this. Start from here, then move infinity. Um, you were going to check the potential difference. At the initial position, the potential is equal to the KQ1 over the A plus KQ3 over the A. And then we know Q1 equals minus Q3. So the potential at this position is equal to zero. And at the initial, at the infinite far away, the potential is also equal to zero. This is from the definition. So if this is true, the potential difference is zero. Then the work need to be done is zero. Number five, starting from the initial configuration in the figure, does one need to supply energy to move Q1 infinitely away from? Okay, so we're still going to check the potential difference. Infinitely, the potential equal to zero. Initially, that will be equal to KQ2 over A plus KQ3 over A. And we know Q2 equal to Q3, they have the same sign. That means 
the potential at the initial position is not equal to zero. Okay, so the potential difference is equal to k q2 over a plus k q1 over uh, q3 over a. Okay, so this is a uh, potential difference. And if we are going to calculate the potential difference energy, potential difference, uh, potential energy, potential energy, that will be the Q1 times the change of the potential. That will be K Q1 Q2 A plus K Q1 Q3 A. Okay, that will be 0.8 times 10 to the negative 3 G. Excuse me? Yeah. Um, so like I did, like when I went about this problem, I did it very similarly, but I just used like electric potential energy at the end and then electric potential energy like at the beginning and then like compared the values to see like how much work that was. Mm -hmm. Would that be like a, a third way to do these types of problems? Uh, for the problem five? Yeah, for three, four and five really, like just, yeah. I always looked at. Uh, yeah. So you can determine the potential energy at the beginning and the potential energy at the end. And eventually you should get the, the same answer because you, you, you know the potential energy actually equal to the potential times the Q. So if this is a zero, then the potential energy is also zero. So okay. uh, yeah. I think that will be the method three. Mm -hmm. Number six, uh, what's the electric potential energy of three charges and in the figure? Okay, so we have three charge. The total potential energy will be the potential energy of each pair, right? each pair. So we have Q1, Q2, Q2, Q3, and the Q1, Q3, right? So the total energy is K, over a, k over a, k over a, then we sum them. And you will find that q1 is a positive, q2 is a negative, q2 is a negative, q3 is negative. So these two first terms just cancel. They just cancel. So we only have the third term. So the result will be minus 0.4. So if you have a positive value, that's not correct. If you have 0.4 positive, this is not correct because Q1 is positive, Q3 is negative. Okay, uh, if you don't have other question, I'm going to move to the problem two. So we have um, in finite slab, we can think of this as a 2D plane, right? 2D plane. And um, inside of the slab, there's a point P, and uh, the charge density is uniform in the slab, and we have a point charge outside of the slab. So first one, what's the electric field due to the charge slab in the center of the slab? Okay, so to calculate the electric field inside, um, inside the plane, we need to uh, sketch a closed surface and to calculate uh, the electric flux and use Gaussian law to solve the electric field. At point P, we can sketch a box. Okay, and you can find that the top side and the bottom side, the flux, um, is equal to zero. So the flux doesn't uh, contribute on the top and the bottom side, but the side side, the side, the side surface, the electric field are perpendicular to the area, the surface. So the flux is not equal to zero. So there are two surfaces. 
this two side surface is going to contribute to the flux. So we have the total flux equal to two, two surface, surface area times the electric field. Okay. And the electric field times the A is a flux. According to Gaussian law, this is equal to the charge inside the box, inside the box, over and epsilon. Okay. And let's see, the charge inside the box could be calculated by the charge density rho times the volume. The volume is equal to, um, let me see, equal to, 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 um, to the surface area times the, the length. The length here is x, so that will be 2x, right? Over, over the epsilon. Now. Then we can solve the electric field is equal to rho, the A cancelled, A cancelled, right? So we have rho and the, num the number two cancelled. So we have rho times x over epsilon naught. Okay, so this is uh, the x, the electric field. And if the x equal to zero here, this is x equal to zero, then this is equal to zero. So the first question, the electric field at the center of the slab is equal to zero. Number two, what's the electric field due only to the charge slab at point P? At the point P, okay, P has the x direct x component or the, the coordinate of point P is let me say a, right? x equal to a. So if x equal to a, then the electric field from uh, the first question is going to rho times a over epsilon. Now. Okay, so let's determine the direction. This is a magnitude and the direction, uh, the direction, let me see, the direction, direction, oh, direction, I see. And we have direction goes right. Okay, so because A is larger than zero, so it goes to the right. So what's the electric force on the charge Q? Electric force on the charge Q, okay, force will equal to the Q times Q here, Q times the electric field at point Q. And let's calculate the electric field at the point Q. And we know at the point Q, we can go to sketch uh, a box, a big box. And the electric field only generates uh, flux on the left surface and the right surface. So in this case, we have flux E times A equal to the charge inside over the epsilon. Now. And there are two surfaces, so we have number two in front. And the charge inside the box will be the rho times and density times the volume. Volume is surface area times the thickness of the slab. The thickness of slab is D. D. So over epsilon now. So the electric field is going to equal to rho D to epsilon now. This is the electric field. So we have electric field, then we we'll times the charge Q. That's the force. And the force go to the right.
Number four, what's the electric potential be difference between the location of the charge at x equal to b and the surface of the slab at x equal to d over two? Okay, the potential difference from okay, from here to here, potential difference. We know outside the infinite uh, 2D plane, the electric fields are uniform. So if the electric fields are uniform, the potential difference could be equal to the minus electric, poten uh, electric field times the distance. So if the distance is from B to D over two, that will be the minus electric field times the B minus D over two. Okay, and the electric field here is this one. This is the electric field. Number five, how much work is required to move charge Q from the initial position to the Y equal to zero? Initial position um, is here, and the Y equal to zero is here. So from here to here. And you find that the electric field is perpendicular to the distance. So electric field perpendicular to the D, therefore the work is equal to zero. Number six, in the graph below, um, plot the x component of electric field of the slab. And we have the expression of the electric field. Into the slab, the expression is rho x over epsilon. Okay, this is E, when x is smaller than the d over 2. Okay. When the x larger than d over 2, the electric field is a constant we have here, uh, rho d over 2 epsilon now. Rho d over 2 epsilon. Okay, so inside our slab, the curve is a linear, is a line here. This is a line, and the maximum value will be the rho d over 2 epsilon. Now. After um, we are out of the slab, it's a constant. It's a constant. Okay, do we have other question? Can you just explain why um, from zero to uh, negative zero to two, why it's negative? Yep. Like, I'm not quite understanding. Because that. x is smaller than zero, so electric field is, is negative. And if you check this diagram from here, uh, at the center, the uh, the electric field is zero. On the right side, electric field goes right. On the left side, electric field goes right uh, goes left. Oh, okay. So in this case, the direction change. So uh, we need a minus sign in front of electric field. Okay, thank you. And number three. Number three. Um, an electron moving in the electric field and then enter a magnetic field? Okay, this is a good question. And so first one, um, the, electric field, uh, the electric field accelerates the electron from zero equal to, uh, from velocity equal to zero to velocity equal to 10 to six meter per second, right? So at here, velocity is zero, at here, velocity is 10 to six. So the electric field accelerates the electron and the electron is negative sign. So what's the magnitude and the direction of the electrical field? So to get the acceleration, we use energy conservation to solve this problem. So in the electric field, um, the work done by the electric force is equal to the electric force times the distance 
the electric force is charge times the electric field. Okay, this is a work done by the electric force. And the work is equal to the kinetic energy difference, right? The change of kinetic energy. Then we can solve the electric field equal to the two over QD mv square. And you can get the answer uh, that will be 5.7 volt per meter. And let's determine the direction of the electric force. And because the velocity goes to the right, if we want to accelerate the, the electron, we need a parallel electric force. Okay. Electric force goes to the right, but this is a negative charge. So the electric field should be opposite of the electric force. So the electric field goes to left. Okay, number two. Once the electron arrives in the magnetic field region, what's the direction of the magnetic force with respect to the velocity vector? We know the force generated by the magnetic field is equal to Q V cross B. So the force is always perpendicular to the velocity. So that's the answer. You just need to say the force is perpendicular to the velocity. That's number two. Number three, what's the minimum width of the magnetic field region? in order for the electron to be deviated by 180 degree. Okay, so to, um, to know what happens for the electron, we need to know the trajectory of the electron in the magnetic field. Since the force is always perpendicular to the velocity, so the electron is going to move in a circle. So a circle, if the radius is very large, the circle is like this. Mm -hmm. And the, the angle is another 180 degree. So the initial angle is this one. When the outside is the angle is this one. This is not 180 degree. And if the radius decrease, it will look like this. And the angle like this. And then keep decreasing, the angle increase until it go to like this. So if we want 180 degree, we need a trajectory. We need a trajectory as a semicircle. Okay, if this is a semicircle, when it out, the velocity go to the left, and the initial velocity go to the right. Then this is 180 degree difference. So that means this circle has a diameter of A. The diameter is equal to the A. So the first one, diameter of the trajectory is A. According to the centripetal force, we have M, velocity squared over R, is a centripetal force. And the magnetic force is Q, V, B. And they should equivalent. Then we can solve the magnetic field or the radius here. The radius we can solve is MV over QB. This is the radius. And then we know the diameter is A, right? So the radius is half A. Then in this case, the minimum of the A should be two times MV over QB. Then you can find this is 11 centimeter. Number four, what direction must the magnetic field have in order for the electron to access the magnetic field at the location below the one it had when it entering the magnetic field? Okay, so if the trajectory is a semicircle in the downside of the x-axis, 
the force just goes in this way, right? Force goes down, velocity goes to the right, then we have force equal to the charge, velocity cross magnetic field, and then we have the negative charge. Negative charge means we need a minus sign in front. So we use right hand row, and right hand row here is um, if you check this one, you will have the velocity go to right. Then we cross, uh, curl my forefinger towards B, and my thumb should goes up, not goes down, because and this is a negative charge. So the force goes down, but my thumb should goes up. Then my forefinger is going to counterclockwise. That means the vector B should point into the pitch. Point into the pitch. So go back here, the magnetic field. Let me go out. Okay. The magnetic field point into the page. Or you can see this is the y direction, this is x direction. Then this is the direction. So that would be the minus z direction. Okay. Number five. In the picture above, make a careful drawing of the trajectory of the electron when it's inside the magnetic field. Okay, so that will be like this: a semicircle. A semicycle. And number six. What's the speed of electron after it has left the magnetic field? What's the speed? We know the force is perpendicular to the velocity. That means um, if we calculate the work done by the magnetic force, that will be this times the d. And the force is perpendicular to the speed, so this is equal to zero, right? If the work done by the magnetic force is zero, that means the kinetic energy doesn't change. That means the velocity is a constant. At the beginning, the velocity tends to the six meter per second. After the electron exits the magnetic field, the speed doesn't change. Do you have other questions? Okay. Number four, three current. What's a magnetic field at the center of the triangle? Okay, the, the three current located at the, at the vortex of the triangle and they have the equal side. So that means they are symmetrical at the center. The magnetic field should be zero. If you don't, uh, you are not, Confident to write a zero, let's determine the magnetic field generated by each current, then we sum up them. Okay, so and my thumb goes out and goes out of the page, my four fingers um, turns counterclockwise. So that means at any point, the, elect the magnetic field generated by the current is counterclockwise. So for the point one, the I1. The magnetic field goes in this way. This is B1. Okay, for the I2, we connect them and it goes in this way. Right? Counterclockwise is the B2. For the third one, the magnetic field goes in this way. This is a B3. And they are both 120 degree. Right? 120 degree. So Magnetic field equal to one plus two plus three plus zero. Number two, 
what's the magnetic field at the point exactly in the middle between the two bottom wires? Okay, first one, let me erase my sketch. I'm going to calculate the, mag uh, the magnetic field at the point P, right? So generated by the current one, and well, going up, because this is counterclockwise, so this is B1, and generated to the point, uh, the I2 uh, should be going down, this B2, right? So you will find that the distance are equivalent, and uh, hold up, hold up. Did I get it right? Mm, goes up, goes down. Okay, yeah. So at the point P, and you will find that the um, magnetic field generated by the current one and the current two cancelled. So we don't need to consider these two magnetic fields. We only need to consider I3, right? I3 generates a magnetic field going to right. It's going to right and okay. So then, if we have uh, the magnetic field going to right, we're going to use uh, the equation B equal to the I three over uh, mu naught I three two pi distance from the I three to P. Okay, the distance from I three to P is a over two times the square root three. Then we can um, go to calculate the magnetic field at the point of P is 1.2 10 to negative six Tesla. Okay. This is the magnetic field and the direction go to the right. Number three, what's the direction and the magnetic uh, of the magnetic force on the top? Okay, what's the direction of the force on the top? And the force on the top, let's see. And we know the magnetic field generated by the current one is counterclockwise. So that will be in this direction. This is B1. And the B2 generated by the current two counterclockwise should go in, go down. This is B2. So the total is pointing left. This is B total. Okay. Then according to the uh, force equal to the current L times the B cross B, the I goes out of the page. And the B um, go to the left. So we use the right hand curl from I to B, then the force goes down. Use another color. Force goes down. Okay, so force goes down. Then what's the magnitude of the force per unit length? Let's calculate the force. So the force is equal to uh, the current times the length cross B. And because the L and the B are perpendicular, so we can just uh, remove the, um, the direction. We use the number, just use the number. Okay, then, um, you will find that um, the force per unit length, we remove the L on the left, that will be equal to I, and I is the I3, I3B, B total. I3B total, okay. Uh, the B total here um, is equal to the I3 times the B total, B, is mu nung times i over 2 pi. The distance 
is A. Okay, distance A. This is generated by each current, this value. And we have to uh, consider the X component this is 30 degree. So we multiply the cosine 30 degree. There are two current, so we times two. Okay, this is a force per unit, and you will get the result is 2.3 10 to the negative six Newton per meter. So this is a number four. And number five, what's the direction of the magnetic force on the top wire if the direction of the current in the bottom left reserved? So this become into the page. That means and the magnetic field of the B1 is going to turn in this way. This is B1, and I'm going to remove the B1. Because the I reserve, so the magnetic field generated by the I1 reserve. So B1 goes to the right down, and the magnetic field should go in this way. This is magnetic field, total magnetic field. Then total magnetic field goes down. Then the force, we are using the same relation from and the I to B, so my thumb goes right. So this is a force. Force goes right. Okay, the last one, extra credit. And what is it possible? to add a wire exactly in the middle between the three wires in such a way that all the force cancel out. Okay, so this is a, a good question. If we just are going to look at the magnetic field generated by the three charge, we say the magnetic field goes counterclockwise. So if this is a circle, we draw a circle, include the three current, then the magnetic field looks like this. So at each point, the magnetic field goes counterclockwise. This is magnetic field. And they're equivalent. So actually, we only need to put a current here and to generate an opposite magnetic field with the same value but opposite direction. Then all the magnetic field will be canceled out, right? So if we need a clockwise magnetic field, we need the current goes into the page, right? If it goes into the page, then the generating magnetic field will go clockwise. Then the counterclockwise and the clockwise cancel out. Then what's the value? We know the magnetic field at, at I3, we just calculate it here. This is a magnetic field at I3, B, generated by the three charge, as uh, the three current is two, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. B generated by the three current is equal to the two times mu non i two pi a cosine 30 degree. Okay, this we just get um, over here. And we need the clockwise. One inside. Okay, then this is a magnetic field. The magnetic field generated by the current, the new current will be the mu non 
new current over two pi distance. The distance here is from the center of the triangle to the current. So that will be the A over square root of three. It is a front geometry. Then you will find uh, the two pi is gone and cosine 30 degree is two, three, um, square root three over two. And let's see what else can we cancel. The A canceled and square root three goes on the top. The square root three canceled and the two canceled. And what else? The mu non canceled. Hold on. Do I need something? Uh, oh, no. The, the square root of three doesn't cancel. The square root of three becomes three. So this is three. And the two goes here is number four. So new, the current new is three over four current. Okay. So this is uh, the result. And I think if you just do some geometry and more practice, you will understand all these questions. So I think I will stop here. And if you have 